Mr. Senghor. It's my pleasure to be back to GRTS after 14 years, like you rightly stated. Uh, we were the first to actually occupy an office in this building uh, over 14, 15 years ago. And it's a pleasure to be back and seeing the whole building fully occupied now. How does it feel being back? Great. I'm meeting a lot of people that I knew from GRTS. We were part of the GRTS fabric then um, because we had our office here and we did a lot of work, our dramas, um, uh, a lot of TV shows, the youth forum, and a lot of things that we used to do. So I'm glad to see some of the f faces that were here and a lot of new faces who actually I can still relate to because I connect and communicate with them online. So it's a good feeling. 14 years is not... 14 days. You said it before. Definitely. What was, you know, what has transpired in your life in the a intervening lot. period? A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, trying to get myself acquainted with the American system, uh, married, got kids, um, went to school, established Gambian talents, and of course, just trying to be part of society, trying to be part of the meaningful um, people, people that are doing something that changes society in a positive way. You've given us a red hair in there, given us a platform to talk. We don't talk about Pa Usman Jov. You don't talk about Gambians, Gambian talents promotion. How does it come about? I said it um, in a few interviews, Gambian Talents, in short, started when I was managing Sing Ate, a.k.a. Freaky Joe. Um, uh, we went for a tour, a U.S. tour, and one of the Gambian DJs in Texas, state of Texas, actually wanted Sing Ate to play in Texas. And uh, while we spoke, um, uh, he told me he was a web designer. I had content, I had connection with the Gambian musicians and a lot of the young talent from the Gambia then. So we decided to actually um, expose the Gambian talent beyond its borders because most of the people had the opportunity to um, get promotion from back home to be recognized here. But the online platforms were very minimal and then they were very few at the time. So that is how it started through Sing Ate Freaky Joe and my connection with Ibunjai. Look, you've had run-ins with, with some of the artists. Mm -hmm. How would you describe Gambian talents promotion and the, the, the work that you're doing online? It's very important, and I wish the Gambian talents around the world know the impact of the work we are doing for them. Because they were not used to what we do, um, some of them would even say, you need to change your name from Gambian Talents to Gambian Haters Promotion Why? because you promote hate. Yes, because they want to us to just specialize in just showcasing the good part and good things about their lives while they don't want to be responsible enough in managing their lives to understand that they are celebrities, they are supposed to be role models, and that there are people out there looking up to them, young kids, who if, only if the artist or the talent tells them, jump, they ask how high. They don't want that. So you cannot be just be living a reckless life and be irresponsible in the streets and doing anything. Engage in fights, beating people up, drinking and smoking, stealing and doing a lot of things um, that you don't want to be talked about. Your life is a full package and the people that are following you are interested in your entire life. So I challenge them to be a lot more responsible. If we don't see anything negative about them, we won't write or talk about it. True. How did they manage to turn back, mm -hmm. come back to, 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 to this platform? Yes, we were prepared. You know, somebody t I met somebody here and they told me, one thing I like about you is the inconsistency because Gambians don't start anything and finish it. But you have been very consistent with what you do. Mm -hmm. I know that for myself. I was psychologically prepared and I trained my team to be psychologically prepared to know that we are getting into something that was you, not happening in the Gambia. You want to go and finish the job? Yes, we wanted to be trendsetters. And with time, 
they got used to it. At the beginning, we write about somebody or say something about somebody. They go on social media too. They attack us. They block us. They, 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 they write status. They do videos and cuss us out and call us names. They didn't know they were adding flame to the fire then. That would not help because anytime they did that, we published that. Anytime they reacted, we published their reaction. So they got to the point that they knew, okay, we cannot fight with these people. They are the media. They can make or damage us. And as a result, they started understanding and started to be more responsible as to what they would do and what they would not do. You were one of the first, if not the first, online radio platforms. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, we saw, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a number of, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, various platforms mm -hmm. springing up. That is a fact. The Gambian Talents promotion was established since 2006. And then there were only few. If there was any online um, uh, platform, uh, Gainako was there. Um, uh, what you call it? Um, uh, all Gambian was there. How Freedom you, newspaper, all of these ones came later on. How did but, you manage to mm -hmm. remain relevant in amongst that group that is, uh, that mm -hmm. is definitely mm -hmm. a, a real voice mm -hmm. for Gambians mm -hmm. in the diaspora? Uh -huh. I will tell you. Amongst all these online platforms, Gambian Talents has been very consistent and st stayed true to the cause with what we did. Our specialization was entertainment, socio-cultural, and academic programs. We had our political programs where we discussed critical and relevant issues related to the country. Um, our difference with a lot of them, uh, why, and the reason why they were more popular, because most of them specialized in politics at the time. Well, you have a package. A yes, we had a complete package, and we stayed true to the cause, all through. We were very consistent with different programs and activities all through, and the evidences are there. Good. Are you I telling me the consistency part of part of it was your main commodity that that sold you out and made you one of the most you know important voices for Gambians yes. in the diaspora? Yes, yes, and because we have a variety, everybody saw themselves in what we do. People that were interested in politics, for example, our Lutak Gambia Rudem program, we have a show called Lutak Gambia Rudem. That's where we discuss critical and political issues. People interested in politics follow that. We have sentiments that talks about love and relationship um, in the homes. People interested in that follow it. We have Menyanta, which of course um, is followed by a lot of, of um, uh, people mm -hmm. interested in that. Mm -hmm. So we have different programs. We have Celeb Avenue, where we talk about celebrity news, gossips, and things like that. We have Teta Tet. We have um, uh, Lumfidef. We have Tambahambalu. Different programs, and everybody just chooses whichever program they are interested in. So that gives us that unique um, uh, 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 personality. That That's selling point is important, but mm -hmm. are you ready to maintain that trend? Yes, we are always trying to be creative and trendsetters. And I will tell you, a lot of the online medium actually are following a lot of the things that we do. We see a lot of, I just sit and people will text me, you know how people are sometimes, they will screenshot somebody that is actually starting something that we've been doing for years now. How does that feel? I feel good. We feel good. Why? Because we are trendsetters. We lead and they follow. Let's come to your coming to the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Why now? Yes. The previous administration, we all know, was very critical. Um, the way Gambian talents operated, those that were in the previous administration, especially APRC, took us to be anti APRC and the government because of our dealings, our association with those that we are especially very critical. We call them the strugglers, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Those in the struggle, because we had that fair and balanced way of reporting Depotions. and involving, whenever we had to do anything with those that were in the previous administration, they took us to be enablers, they took us to be um, sellouts, and people that were actually the voice of the IGM. I was accused of being an NIA on multiple times, just sure. because we've reported things about them. But we believe that we have done a lot, 
and the way things were, the environment was not very conducive for us to come at the time. So now that there is a change of government and the new Gambia, we decided to come and see what we can do um, to actually contribute our quota locally and meet and interact with folks that we have dealt with for the longest and did not have the opportunity to. And since I came, it has been very fruitful. Um, with what has been your impression of this country? When you walked down the steps of that brain, walk into this country? Honestly, a lot has changed. I did not recognize the airport. I still did not recognize a lot of places, even where I used to live you know, oh, really? on Canifing South. Even the same street where we had our office. I was attending the University yes. of the Gambia and going up and down through this MDI road. A lot of things have changed. This school used to be called Pipeline, Pipeline Comprehensive. Yeah. Now it's yeah. Daddy, Daddy Joe. Joe yeah. A lot of the, um, ah, you things have you, you, you can't recognize I your own not. neighborhood, right? Yes, I could not, honestly. Can you out? I used to live by the masjid there. There is so much development. Serakunda everywhere, Banjul. So much development and improvement, which, of course, I will give the credit back to the Gambians, both home and abroad, um, because it looks like the people have grown and are doing a lot in society. But I will tell you the truth, though, a lot needs to be changed still. What do you think needs to be changed? Attitudes. Why? The new Gambia, I've been saying it lately, should be the new me and the new you and the new you that is watching. People's attitudes need to change. For the longest, for the followers of Gambian talent, they have heard me say on our platform that Yaya Jame has always been a great chunk of the Gambia's problem, but he wasn't the only problem. We are our own problem. We need to change our attitudes. We need to be disciplined. We need to be patriotic citizens, and people don't have that sense of patriotism. People think they are doing somebody a favor by doing their rightful duties to the nation. We have a social and moral responsibility to take our country to the next level, to put Gambia on the map, to make Gambia the paradise of the world. But unfortunately, a lot of our people lack that understanding. And I see this across all sectors in this country. You go to public places, people should be doing their jobs, their responsibilities, but they think they are doing you a favor. People's attitudes, carefree attitude. People are on their phones 24-7. People don't care about a lot of things that are happening. People just need to change. And this is across because I've dealt with security officers. I've dealt with people at the hospital. I've dealt with people in the messages. I've dealt with people at the bank, private sector, both government and private institutions. And even in public places, people's attitudes need to change. The new Gambia, the new me, the new you, the new you. So many people. Mm -hmm return from the diaspora mm -hmm. in the intervening period mm -hmm. from January right down mm -hmm. to this particular material moment. moment. Mm -hmm. And each time we talk to the returnees, I, I, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll quote unquote, mm -hmm. I will tell you one specific thing, and mm -hmm. that is the attitude issue you're talking about. Yeah, because this is because in the West, it is unacceptable. Pe yes, people's orientation. When you go to work, for example, we are paid by the hour. Oh. Time is very important. In this country, people don't seem to care about time. Five minutes, anywhere you work, five minutes is called tardiness. When you are 30 for one time, the, you get verbal warning. The second time, you get written warning. Third time right. is not negotiable. And a lot of institutions, and that is why they get where they are. You see people, I mean, just don't care. I saw the different social events happening on the streets, and they blocked the road. Do they know how much money we are missing for closing the road? So people just have that carefree attitude. It doesn't matter. Ah, let's just go with the flow. We need a, a total transformation of attitudes to get the country moving. Just last night we were on the radio. I was discussing the social um, the problems of the Gambian showbiz and entertainment. I was there with a lot of Gambian artists and promoters and stakeholders in the music business. And at some point we are making a joke. Somebody said what they think is I think we need to sell the whole Gambia and divide the money Kuneka Jils apart. Yes. Somebody thought that I think we need to do prayers for the country. Let the youth gather and do prayers for the young people. And I said my take, what I've been saying on our platform, is we need to kill this whole new, <laughs> this whole generation of Gambians and get build a new Gambia because of our attitudes. The family is in our blood. blood. It's in our blood. We need to change our attitudes for real towards a lot of things. That takes us to the attitude in the industry mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. 
definitely mm -hmm. been played a very big part. Mm -hmm. The music industry. Mm -hmm. You were on the radio mm -hmm. last night, I guess. Mm -hmm. How do you see the Gambian music industry? A lot need to change. We have gone a long way, just like I said on the radio yesterday, and I said on um, uh, the African mix, mix mm -hmm. show with um, Senate. Senator. Um, a lot needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. We have raw, unrefined talents, but branding is what our artists, our talents are lagging. What is the problem there? Promoters? Branding. No. It could be the promoters. It could be the um, artists. artists themselves. Because a lot of the artists are self-managed. They don't have any experience. A raw talent is what they have. Raw talent is what they have. If they can write songs, go to a studio, record it. Maybe it's even recorded for them for free. They just play it on the radios one, twice, and, and it, it becomes a hit. Yeah. They, they think they are superstars and celebrities and want to live that um, star life. A lot of the things they should be concentrating on, they don't concentrate anymore. They start to have that star mentality in their head. You only have one single. You can even be a one-time hit wonder, but they don't get it. They want to be stars. They don't have the discipline. They don't respect time. They want to live a carefree attitude, following, especially the guys following women. Before you know it, they impregnate one or two, guy, or two girls on the street. They just want to live that life, smoking and drinking and thinking that this is the lifestyle that they're supposed to live. When they should be business-minded, when they should be oriented. And when we talked yesterday, when we spoke on the radio, we all agreed that the attitude is what needs to change, not only in the music industry, but in the country alone. I mean, people don't believe in supporting each other. Business people, um, promoters, and other people don't understand that they have a moral responsibility towards helping other yes. people to grow. When you make the money, it's supposed to succeed. You give everybody their dues. Right. Let them have a share fare of the country's cake. Mm. What you are making, don't keep it to yourself. Just share it with everybody else. Um, in, invest. Entertainment is seen in the country when it comes to the attitude still. The people in the Gambia see entertainment to be a foolish thing, you mm. where you take the um, actor or the actress as a clown. You want to do that, your family looks at you as a useless, useless person. person. Even those of us in the media, we are seen as useless people to a great extent because of the people's orientation. They don't know this could be a way of livelihood. This is a profession. This can be a career. This is something that can earn you a living. It's not seen like that until and unless you succeed in it. For the longest, I've been fighting with my family about the acting that I do. do. What is the takeoff point for us to, 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 to get up? I go back break. to the drawing board. Attitudes need to change. People need to be orientated. I challenge the current government to invest a lot in civic education, in enlightening the Gambian public about their rights, their responsibilities, their duties towards the country and towards each other. And this is not only the role of the government, but us as a community, as mm -hmm. citizens. Let it start at the grassroots level. Let us, let us start it at our homes, um, in our houses. If we do that, definitely the Gambia will be paradise in this world. If people from the grassroots level at homes are orientated, um, people get lazy, people sit at home, the whole family want to rely on one person that is abroad or that is here that has a good job. It forces those that are in the country to actually do, to be caught up on, at their jobs because they have 10, 20, 30 family members relying right. on them. They have to come home and feed those people. They have to pay school fees for not only their kids but their cousins, their cousins kids and all of that the amount of money they are making is not equivalent to their responsibility it forces them to be corrupt if you are abroad it forces some people to get into selling drugs and doing other things because you want to live a luxurious life and it's not okay so it comes back to the attitude let us change our attitudes and it starts by educating and orientating us from the grassroots level and it goes up to every sector and if you are orientated at home, you will take it to the school, you will take it to the workplace, you will take it everywhere, and everybody will be on the same page. Government should not be afraid of giving the people the pill that they should swallow, yes. no matter how bitter it is. Yes. And that pill is that important civic education. Civic education is very important to make people aware, to make people know and understand. If they don't do that, they are failing the people, unfortunately. And it looks like that's part of the direction we are leading to. A lot of the opportunities that the, and that can be done through the media. 
this is the quickest and fastest way through the media through the celebrities it doesn't matter religious leaders people who are following religious leaders can play a big role in that politicians themselves can play a big role in that artists sportsmen they can use different sector even cultural personnel <laughs> cultural people a, the whole sector of society people that are following can play a big role in that to start the sensitization because like i said when these people talk they people have listeners. people that listen to them okay. and they will do anything they tell them your, so, s your social activism mm -hmm. you know spanned you know more than a decade mm -hmm. you've seen gambia from afar mm -hmm. you're not in the country mm -hmm. you were one of the most resourceful young people before mm -hmm. you left mm -hmm. and you've taken that one to a different line mm -hmm. do you see a future for the young people of this country Yes, I encourage them to be consistent still, because if we achieve any little, the little we achieve so far is as a result of the consistency. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of young, talented Gambians traveled, and that's the end of it. Why? Because the opportunities for them to um, start a new life when I was not there. I love what I do. I am still strong because of the love I have for it love what you do and don't um uh, do what um uh, uh, you love yes do we That's expect to see you coming back and settling in the country yes i hope so um i will be quick to say not this trip i'm not ready because a lot of people watching anytime you come to the gambia, gambia. or oh, president baro mola or oh, oh. president baro called you or you are coming to talk to the government since i came i have only been dealing with private institutions and personnel and uh prostate government parastaters mm -hmm. i have not been i have not spoken to any top official they might be aware of um, our presence. presence in the country mm -hmm. we have except when we did our salibo mm -hmm. on quality mm -hmm. day after quality mm -hmm. we went around to the different politicians homes unannounced actually and we were even refused entry in some of their homes how does it uh, feel <laughs> having to to go to a, a place uh, you know that you you are doing a program you know the famous celebo program mm -hmm. was in the entry. Mm -hmm. you are denied entry it's, it's um uh, you, my team had difficulty um understanding when i told them let's just go we are doing this and it is okay we report what we see it's okay Only if that... we are denied entry let's just go they're like no 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 no. you should call this we've called we've made a lot of attempts to call to some of them but whoever we got hold of we let them know we are coming no 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 no, no. let's program this we said no we're just coming to see how you spend your quality or whatever some of them we couldn't get hold of we went to their homes um we went to Khalifa's house he was in there his wife opened and she was surprised that she saw us we did what we did and told her we were here for Khalifa I mean she gave us our salibo and we went ahead well, we went to OJ's house I mean he was there we spoke to him we went to um uh, lawyer Dabo's house we were refused entry um at his house we went to other musicians and other um celebrities around the country with uncle everybody and it was nice and we went with our tamas and all these cultural traditions I mean stuff and it was just for fun to show the people um, how our leaders how our celebrities how our elders spent their holidays you see these are things that are very important, important. for a society but our Gambian society is too stiff, rigid, rigid and stiff mm -hmm. and it's about time for we us to open loosen up. up and open up and be flexible and take these things I mean the way they are supposed to be those are that's one of the problems that's why we are 50 years behind every other country in the world you did similar programs in Seattle mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. I, I know you've been doing a whole lot of uh, <coughs> programs, uh, social events, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, tell us more about life on the other side of the mm -hmm. Atlantic. Gambians in the diaspora, a lot of us spend our day very boring. So we keep them company while at work, while at home. You go to work, come home, stay with your family. If you are alone, you're there. If you are not somebody that is very open. What is fun to the Americans or Europeans and the people from there might not be fun to you. We have our culture, our tradition, and 
our ways of life. So we bring those things to them as much as possible. You want to keep it alive? Yes. So we organize events, like I organize um, with partners in different states in America, um, Goody Ganilas, Annual Ndui Dambaze, they call it, where our people come. We organize cultural activities like right now we are working on the Seattle Cultural Weekend, which of course we started last year. Wow. You will be surprised how many old women Mm. Our mothers that are in Seattle that came to visit their families and they are very boring staying home just helping yeah. their families. families. I mean their yeah. kids babysitting their kids and, and our grandkids and stuff. So we organized last year and um, we started uh, called Grandma's Day. Wow. Which of course we just hired a place, we rented a place and we cook food and provided some cultural activities for the grandmas and only if you see happiness yeah. in their faces. So that is there what is we, a feel of that Gambian, Gambian Gambian That is what we expanded. Just them coming together and sitting down and just hearing some Yande Kodosen, hearing some Goyan music, hearing some Soruba dancing to it yeah. alone was just enough for these grandparents. So this year we expanded it and we we're having a two day event on the fifth and sixth of next month um, over there in Seattle. And a lot of Gambian organizations are organizing this cultural event. So through our social media pages and our radios, we have different programs that I mentioned to you earlier that keep them company to actually engage and interact. And it makes their day go by fast. So we educate and entertain the Gambians in the past. I, I, do, I don't want to use this, this, this term, multi-talented. You know, you don't want to use um, you mm -hmm. know, uh, tax phrase or adjectives to describe uh, people like that or the but we know how how much talented you are mm -hmm. you you've you've combined a whole lot of your mm -hmm. your, your natural talent mm -hmm. to, to to project an image that that is is still i believe is is you know uh, an extraordinary you know self creation mm -hmm. um, you do comedies mm -hmm. you 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 have your platforms, your different activity, things that you mm -hmm. do, your activism. Mm -hmm. How did you manage to put all of those things together and, and still aspire to to, 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 to to reach that highest level? Like I said earlier, it's loving what I do. It's therapeutic for me. I have fun doing it. To tell you the truth, coming to Gambia, a lot of people I talk to or I meet on the street or inbox me, they be like, are you not in Gambia for holidays? Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Stop this thing. Why are you doing this? Honestly, well, like, what I'm doing is what is giving me fun. You like it. They just don't understand. I uh, am not the guy that would go clubbing whole night, I mean, drinking, smoking, or partying with the girls and doing all of this. Thing. What I am doing is what is giving me fun. I enjoy it. I don't have a life without what I'm doing. It might sound strange to some people, but it is. By Ibrahim Abba Mamakoto, I'm doing, he's 85 years old. We are doing the Menyanta show on the Gambian Times Radio. He said he was lifeless because this is what he knew. Do it, did it in Gambia for over 30 years. He was redundant in America, not having a life. When he started this show again, he him and I, I can click with him. It was hard for the family and friends to understand when he said he wanted to come back to media. They say, you've retired. But he, this is giving him a life. So for myself. What I am doing gives me life, and that is why I continue to do them. They are all interrelated. I love acting. I would like to act. I like to educate and entertain people through the art. I love to act. I love music. So I believe in educating people through these means. I believe to entertain people through these means. Like I said earlier, if you can kill with sugar, why use poison? If you can educate people, entertain them, and tell them, I've listened to Imam Babali preach and say, if you listen to somebody who was making fun, say, if you listen to somebody preach, and they're like, Jahannama, they don't only stop at Jahannama. They say, Jahannama Dimba. They don't stop at the Dimba. They say, Jahannama Dimba Wulango. <laughs> huh? Why did you get to go to the Dimba Wulango? Just say Jahannama. Yeah. So if you can entertain people and educate them at the same time, just go for it. And I believe in what I do. I love what I do. And as a result, um, by the grace of God, we will continue to do it because we love it and love what you do. When you're on, if you were to come down here, mm -hmm. how would you want to see the Gambia? I want to see people's attitude change. I want to see people um, 